countries and different backgrounds. Thanks for listening. Let me congratulate you because you know this is uh, encouraging when we are talking about building up disagreements, uh, institutional affairs. You know you only made us because it's you know it's for a good purpose. Uh, I think you were also very successful. You know typically ten minutes we heard in the morning you were five minutes. So again, thank you for keeping it short, but very uh, very much. Mary, I would advise that we you stay here in the in the so we would make a nice you know family picture at the end. <laughs> by collecting a uh, father testimony. Would you, would you mind just uh, staying here? Then in that case, they, I invite uh, them to join us, uh, Willem Jonker. He's the CEO of ICT Labs, uh, another kick uh, uh, we have uh, been putting in place. And I think you also brought some testimonials. So I trust that you would also, Willem, be uh, successful into confining all uh, your presentation and the testimonials in 15 minutes. Okay, I look forward very much to that. And, uh, uh, yes, we, we got the people around here, right? And then at the end we take, of course, the questions as we promised at the beginning. So, Khalid and I will tell you a little bit about how things are going in uh, ICT labs. And uh, what I will do is, is run through a few slides very, very quickly to see where we are and, and what our mission is. So, we need to do something to create more jobs in Europe. And, and we focus in the area of ICT. So, our mission is really to boost the ICT innovation in uh, Europe. And we are actually active in eight countries. Five of them are our so-called core node. We will extend that one beginning of next year with a sixth node in, in Treto, which is now one of our associate nodes, and we are in London and also in Budapest. We are present there in really uh, very dynamic ecosystems where there is a lot of ICT uh, industry gathered already, and we put our convocation centers on purpose there. Our convocation centers are, are physical areas, uh, which you can see there in Berlin, up to Stockholm. And what we do there is, is we really want that to be vibrant meeting places where people meet. Uh, especially in ICT, of course, you often get the question, is video conference not good enough? Do you need physical presence? Uh, I would say, yes, you do need physical presence. Which I, I don't know whether any of you, for example, tried to do a brainstorm for a whole day using a video conference system. It simply doesn't work. You need to be together. Physical presence is still very important. This looks a very complicated picture, but it's actually a very simple one. It says, OK, if you want to bring innovations, you need excellent people. And I think that is, 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 is the key. But of course, if you just have excellent people, but you don't have excellent ideas on, on what to do, it doesn't really work either. So that's the other thing you want. You need excellent ideas. But then you have the excellent ideas and the excellent people. Then it's all about bringing those things to the market. 
and that is what you see on the right hand side. And this bringing to the market can be done by creating new companies, but it can also be done through existing companies. And for us it is very important that we have a good balance between them. So there is a lot of focus on startups creating of new businesses, but if you have a company with 100,000 employees, and you are running that company for 100 years successfully, you bet there was a lot of innovation going on in such a company to be able to survive for such a long time. So it's a different game, but there is a lot of innovation in big companies going on. This model is for us very important. We want to be a catalyzer on existing activities. So we look around and say, hey, where is this worth to just give that additional push to make things happen? We work in these four areas. This is what we're doing in research. We currently start focusing on building a master school, and we start on <coughs> building so-called industrial training centers at the PhD level. And what we do is we introduce two important elements into the master school. First important element is mobility. So the master school in ICT means one year in one country and the second year in another country. And that's mandatory. And the second thing that we introduce is the integration of entrepreneurship and innovation. So we cut out 30 ECTS of technical content and replace that by modules that focus on innovation and entrepreneurship in ICT. And those modules are to some extent generic, but also to some extent very much tailored to the application domain. Because the business models in healthcare, where ICT is applied, are completely different than the business models that are used in content delivery of audio and video material in another domain. So they are tailored. In the area of business development, for us, the main focus is getting rid of SMEs. And although SMEs are very popular, we think we should get away with them. We should get away with them because we should grow them into multinationals. So our focus is on growing SMEs. And if an SME has to grow, it's actually all about one thing. Sales, 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 and for sales you need customers. And what we build is a, is a European network that will help these SMEs to quickly find the right customers because you can spend a lot of time on going after the wrong customers. And to find the right customers, you need a deep understanding of what the technology that you are having to offer can and cannot do. And that really requires expertise in the domain. And that's what we're doing in this entrepreneur sportship system. And also I showed a couple of startups that we generated. Meanwhile, there are three that really are there because of EIT ICT Labs. Of course, there are a lot of other startups in our network as well, but these ones were ICT Labs was just the decisive factor in those people deciding to get it going. In the area of research, we are actually mainly focusing on building pan-European test beds and living labs. And that's where we make a difference with respect to what you see in all the other instruments that are available in Europe. A project never had the longevity to come and set up a pan-European test bed, for example, that is sustainable. We can, because we have a focus of at least the first framework contract for seven years, and we expect another to follow it. So we have the long-term vision and also the long-term presence to do in-depth investment for really game changes. And we go very fast. We don't spend the money on a company car, we, call it, we bought a company boat. <laughs> if that's illegible. <laughs> Thank you.
not understand something, just ignore it. Because I'm coming from Snowland, nice Snowland, called Finland. Uh, I have, uh, I'm Khalid Latif and I'm uh, doing PhD in University of Turku, Finland in ICT area. And uh, in addition, I'm doing MBA for PhD. Uh, that is specifically designed for uh, PhD students. And now, why I want to switch to entrepreneurship, that I will explain. First of all, during my PhD, I received a lot of, uh, our group received a lot of funding from Nokia and the uh, Finnish Foundation and some other uh, foundations in Finland. And then I have also worked in uh, NXP Philips for some time as a software developer. Now, why I got motivation to become an entrepreneur? I never implemented my own idea, even I did a lot of research, I work in industry. I had something to develop whenever you discuss with your boss and they says no. It is not worthwhile, it's whatever you think, they don't want to trust you. Then you cannot, can never get the value of your idea, even whatever you are going to implement, and what it deserves. The other thing which motivated me was limited growth. If I am doing a job in some company, then wherever I will end, if my son or next generation will come, they are going to start again from zero. But if I am an entrepreneur and, or I am doing some business, then my son or my next generation will start where I will end. So that was the main motivation for me. Another opportunity I got for MBA for PhD with, that I mentioned earlier. And main motivation for MBA was, as I explained, I can do something for my own and I can implement, I can implement my own idea. So that was main motivation and uh, that motivated me for uh, to become an entrepreneur. And that is the main topic of this presentation for me. Uh, what are the ingredients to become a successful entrepreneur? Yeah, entrepreneur. Don't re try to replace the existing system that I learned from my friends. That one of my friends developed the power saving system like this electrical power. And it was very, very efficient system. Then another company came. The system was not that efficient, but it was quite simple system. That company was successful and my friend was not successful. The reason was when they want to implement the power saving system, the only problem that he didn't consider that, uh, was you have to replace your existing power system. Though you can save like 40% power. But other company came that can save like 15% power, but you don't need to do anything, just plug and play. It, uh, the system was like that. Just you take the socket out, place in between that system, plug your topic again. So that company was successful. So we should think what customer want, and they don't want to install your system at any cost. Like they want free installment. So that was the first thing I learned from my friends and my circle of uh, colleagues. Then the other thing is advertise personally wherever possible, in your friends, family, and friends of friends, and like that. And then try to cooperate with industry I have another colleague who is successful. They were, okay, I will give you a simple example of related to electronics. Like if you are producing electric bulbs, you can produce electric sockets as well at the same time because whoever is going to use your electric, uh, electric bulb, they need a socket holder. So try to cooperate with the industries because if you advertise them, they will advertise you. So in that sense, the products, and these two products are complementary, and that I learned again from experience of my colleagues. Follow your vision. In two senses, one is take the risk, whatever you think, just think what you are going to do, don't think what will happen. Second thing is when you want to grow, grow slowly, plan your growth, growth management. Because if you produce something, suddenly you feel there is some complementary product, you can produce that as well. Might be within a year because your growth is very quick these days and you come down even more quicker. So, plan your growth and plan after how much time you will produce that second product. Once your first product is stable, then go for the next one. So, plan the growth. And finally, entrepreneurial success is just innovative idea and target the right customer. Plus, plus. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I think that again it was very encouraging. Uh, uh, you know, this world is uh, 
uh, funny because my first job was in Turku. I'm also myself also a telecom engineer, of course, so that was 87, so, but I guess the castle is still there, the archipelago is still there. Thank you again for the testimony and also William. I, I try to join them uh, together with Mary and the rest of the people so that we take together the questions at the end. So it's now time for uh, Diego Pavia. Uh, he's the CEO of uh, Inno Energy, the third uh, kick that will be presented today. And uh, he has also, I guess, some, yeah, some energy, extra energy and testimonies to offer you. So please, Diego, Mr. Energy with your, <laughs> with your colleagues. Servicing the highway, you can serve my web, all the weather things. 